Hey, I'm Jesse. Let's continue in this text, 1 Corinthians 7, wherein Paul is laying out the unique calling for people gifted with singleness. He lays all this out, not as a command from the Lord, but as his opinion. See verse 25. Continuing in the text, we've arrived at verse 32. I want you to be without concerns. The unmarried man is concerned about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But the married man is concerned about the things of this world, how he may please his wife. And his interests are divided. The unmarried woman or virgin is concerned about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy, both in body and in spirit. But the married woman is concerned about the things of this world, how she may please her husband. I am saying this for your own benefit, not to put a restraint on you, but to promote what is proper, so that you may be devoted to the Lord without distraction. One of my uh, my buddies from the BCM at Florida State, Baptist Collegiate Ministry, which is this college ministry group that's on campus at, at a lot of big universities. We came to this idea. We didn't know how old we would be when we got married. We knew that we wanted to be husbands one day. This is, that's, that's critical. Like if you know that God has called you to be a husband, to be a wife, to be a father, to be a mother, then I believe you're not called to singleness. I believe your call to singleness is clear. You have a gift for this, and this is a gifted life, and that you are free from distraction. You can put more hours into the church than I can. Do you remember around Christmas time, we studied the stories of like Simeon and Anna. Now it's a little bit of a different story because Anna was a widow, but she does exemplify what I'm talking about. If you're not married, you're not divided. Your whole life focus is on the glorification of the Lord. You don't have someone else to provide for and please. You don't need to buy eight passenger vehicle like I do because I got so many kids. Instead, your whole devotion is to the Lord. When we as college dudes hoping to be married one day, but not sure what God's will was just yet, kind of made this pact and said, okay, when we're 30, if we're not married yet, you know, uh, and then one of them actually talked about, no, for me, it's got to be 35. Uh, If we're not married yet, we're going to enlist in the IMB, the International Mission Board, and go become missionaries to Sudan, sometimes called the Sudan, country in Africa, which at the time had the highest rate of martyrdom for Christian missionaries. Because we're like, hey, if, if God's not calling us to be husbands and not calling us to raise children, then somebody's gotta go there. And we evidently are, are among some of the most expendable. And this is maybe what God's calling us to do. And so we made this pact. Now. Uh, I think it was about a year later that I was married. (laughs) So I wasn't held to that, but it is one of those, it is something to consider that like, yeah, if if something happened to, to my family, you know, God forbid the the remainder of my family were, were lost. What would I do? Where would I go? I mean, it could very well be that God would call me to go be a missionary in a country where uh, I'm not making a widow out of my wife. If, if I'm killed, where I'm not making orphans of my children, if my wife and I are gone, if we're murdered for our faith, martyred. Uh, and this is, this is what Paul's talking about. If, I want you to be without concerns because your interests are in fact divided. Now, there's, a, there, there's still a kingdom return on what you invest in your family, but it doesn't really help the church much. You know, when my kids outgrow my Honda Pilot and I gotta replace it with like a Ford Expedition. You know, that doesn't do a whole lot for the kingdom of God. That is a division of my interests, you know, uh, but that's me taking care of my family. That's me doing what I got to do for my family. It doesn't, it doesn't really help the church a whole lot if, you know, I spend all of my time cooking for my wife and kids. If I were single, I would just like microwave a meal and I'd be good. But as it is, I got to feed, I got to feed six mouths. And so I spent a lot more time cooking and that time could have been devoted on sermon writing, could have been devoted uh, devoted to studying for devotions. It could have been spent writing curriculum. It could have been spent visiting people in the hospital or what have you, but it's spent invested in my family. My interests are divided because I am a married man. I am a, I am a husband and I'm a father. But if you're gifted with singleness, you have undivided interests. What might God accomplish with the innumerable hours that you have that I don't? And this is what Paul, this is what Paul is calling for. I'm saying this for your own benefit, not to put a restraint on you, but to promote what is proper so that you may be devoted to the Lord without distraction. Now tomorrow, he's going to start addressing some of the concerns that were brought up about the single people in the church at Corinth. If you're gifted with singleness, would you, would you reach out to us? My bride and I would love to pray for you. If you are 
currently single, you don't feel like your gift of a singleness, you feel like God's calling you to be married one day, do the same, please. Come to the Redemption Church. Come in person. Come give me a big giant bear hug uh, down at the at the altar at the end of service. I would love to pray with you. I'd love to pray for you. I know my bride would love to pray for you as well.